Hey, so here is a Pimax Super with a thick display port cable. And here is a new wireless headset. I can still read even the smallest subtext on these dials and all buttons. Easy. It literally looks exactly the same as flying with a Super. But this is wireless. And before you ask about the wireless latency, yeah, I cannot tell a difference in the latency too. This is the next generation of wireless PC VR to replace all cables. And this tech is straight from Valve. I thought the new Steam Frame will be just another Quest standalone headset. But it's nothing like any PC VR on the Quest or any standalone headset I have ever tested before. This is literally the display port cable quality on a standalone wireless headset right now. This is the end of the display port era. Here is Hitman. And I can see clearly past the pink minivan, all the way down to the road closure signs at the end of this alley. There are no video compression artifacts on these trees either. Again, this puts any virtual desktop and quest to shame. I'm playing at 5.5k per eye on the 4k micro OLED panels and all that good stuff, so I could see clearly past this van and totally now you start to see the road closure signs that I could see from the beginning of this alley. So this is easily the clearest VR I have ever seen and this is the exact reason why I'm comparing to the Pimax Super, the top of the line display port headset on the market right now. And people will probably still not believe me, but a few who have already tested with new technology, are already putting their Super Megan X and Beyonds for sale. Not joking, here are the comments with the impressions. And currently this tech is only available on the Play for Dream headset, with the developer preview files from Valve, and a fun fact, Valve had this Play for Dream headset, and we are working on this wireless link before the Chinese company even contacted about porting the Steam link to this headset. And this is very likely how the new Steam Frame will work. It is a standalone headset with a Snapdragon chip and eye tracking. And basically it uses the eye tracking to send only a little square of a screen cropped from the full 5.k resolution. So for me the whole screen looks like it's a proper 5.5k display running on a cable. But this is why it runs so fast and looks so good, because Steam Link sends way, way less data than any Quest or virtual desktop that are trying to compress and send the whole screen. So the virtual desktop cannot even stream above the 3.5k resolution. And even then it becomes extremely unstable streaming at those high resolutions with high latency, and this is why people hate wireless for any competitive games. But with the new Steam Link, everything looks twice sharper, more detailed, over the best virtual desktop settings. And it runs multiple times faster too. Three times less CPU and GPU load on the headset, fans are spinning idle, and that saves a lot of battery on a standalone headset too. Here is where I typically see all blurriness and video compression artifacts on the Quest, but nothing on the new wireless headset. It looks perfect, just like a cable. Guys, I'm really trying to pixel peep and find some flaws on this wireless link, but there are no flaws or complaints. It performs exactly like a cable. The only issue you can see or maybe hear all my video recordings have no audio, because this is a developer preview, this is not even a beta, but it already works so amazing. Again, no color banding, no color compression, this runs 10 bit colors, and the sharpness on the 4K micro OLED panels is just the next generation of the PC VR graphics. I do not know if the Steam Frame will have 4K panels, I think those are still way too expensive, like the headset would cost like an Apple Vision Pro or at least like a Pimax Super. So I think that is simply too expensive. And Valve will go with something closer to the Quest and Pico standalone headsets. Just with the eye tracking and a USB wireless dongle included. Which will make the network setup easy. Because right now I'm using a Wi-Fi 7 router. 
which already is easy to set up, but again having a plug and play wireless dongle would be stupidly consoles levels of easy to get the wireless VR working. Any yeah, virtual desktop looks like a blurry, laggy piece of shit in comparison to the new link right now. There is simply no going back. And this thing has even improved the visuals and latency even on my free year old Quest Pro. Because the Quest Pro has the eye tracking too. But on the Pro, eye tracking is a bit slow and less smooth, so it's not as magical as on the Play for Dream, where I literally cannot tell a difference from a cable or find any issues with the new wireless link. And Valve has officially stated already we will be adding more features to the link. Even a Pico full body tracker support is coming soon, and Panda full body trackers are working with this already. Hand and eye tracking in VR Chat 2. I have recorded the Beat Saber video on the Quest Pro using the Panda full body trackers, and you can see the same 25 milliseconds low latency even on the three years old hardware. And 25 milliseconds are less than a screen on your Steam Deck with around 40 milliseconds delay, less than a PlayStation 5 connected to a TV with a cable, again around 40 milliseconds. This is literally faster than gaming on a modern consoles with a cable. But it works good only with the eye tracking, which makes this Play for Dream headset basically the only supported wireless standalone headset on the market right now, before the Steam frame comes. And so many beyond fanboys were posting how we need a native Steam headset with a low latency. Well, this is literally a native one-click Steam VR wireless headset right now. One click to connect to the Steam Deck or PC VR. And yeah, this has made not only the Beyond, but all new Pimax DisplayPort headsets look outdated before even shipped. People are literally cancelling pre-orders and putting the old DisplayPort crap for sale. And it will be really interesting to see the response after this launches publicly. I got the info that the next DMOS 3.8 will add support for VR game streaming on the deck and 3.8 beta is coming around October or November. I will be putting an updated video then and flat screen games run perfect already. And yeah, leave your comment below. Have you tried the new Steam link on an eye tracked headset? What is your impressions? And will you upgrade to a wireless standalone after knowing it has no more compromises coming from the cable? Finally, you will not be tied to your PC like a little good dog anymore. I can literally use the headset all around my house with the panda trackers already, even bring it outside and a full body blade and sorcery video outside is coming soon. So subscribe to not miss it and I will see you in the next one.